My name is Cindy Choi, and I'm just briefly going to talk about what the mentor guidelines, what the rules of the mentor are, and go a little bit deeper into the judging process. The mentor's role for you all, I think, is it's gonna, they're going to respond and they're going to counsel. They're not going to do the work for you. Um, they are there to help you read your business plan. They are there to help you counsel and advise on your business strategy, your financial projections, uh, your marketing strategy. Is this a good business model? Am I going to make money? That type of thing. Just in terms of confidentiality and NDAs, um, CleanTech Open we're, is not going to have any NDAs signed, as you all know. This is typical for venture capital that you submit your executive summaries and people do not sign NDAs. Um, however, if you want to share confidential information with your mentors, they, as they represent themselves, can sign NDAs and can sign confidential matters. So please feel free to be very open with them. And if you want, um, if you're maybe your IP is pending or you haven't filed your patents yet, that's something that you should consider. We uploaded all the feedback from the first round judges uh, yesterday. So. You should be able to log into your account and find out the judging feedback. It's really important that when you sign into your account, look at what the judges have said. During this first round, um, we, th there's something in your executive summary that was compelling, but there are probably a lot of questions that are unanswered that they want to see answered in the final round. The final round will be much more strict, and if you ignore those feedback, the feedback and the questions, and it's obvious that nothing was addressed in terms of answering those questions, it's not likely that you'll be a fun, the, the winner. So business plan and the presentation will be on September 13th. Um, there's going to be mentoring sessions this whole month. And feel free to meet with your mentor outside of the entire process, and outside of the, the week, the planned workshops. Um, and so in the final round, Essentially, the contestants will be assigned one date uh, between October 1st and October 10th, and finalists will be pitching to a panel of judges live. So this is your time to shine. In the time between now and then, work with your mentors to, to finalize your business plan and really prepare on your oral presentation, because um, it's very important you have a half hour slot to talk in front of these, uh, in the, the, the judging panel, and to do Q&A. So this will be, the judges will give you live feedback during this period of time, um, during this half hour, and that's it. You will not have any other access to the judges. So the final round is essentially your business plan and this, this half hour slot with presentation and Q&A. So at the end of this whole session, judges select a winner and a runner-up that same day. So it's important to do well. Here's the timeline for the judging process. So September 13th is when the final round submissions are due. Um, there's really, if you go after that, I'm sorry, you probably will not get into final round into the, the judging process. So uh, as I said before, October 1 to 10 is the final round presentations. And that's when you're going to get not all suited up, have done your presentation a couple of times in front of your mentor, in front of uh, you know maybe friends and family, get gotten feedback. This is your one chance in front of the judges. November 6th is the award ceremony, and that's when the finalists are announced. This is the judging criteria, right? Winning teams show, a, show outstanding performance in these categories as a whole. The team, um, and the team, you know, basically is, is the team strong? Is the team realistic? What is the track record of the team? Um, is there a clear plan for recruiting holes in the team? Do you understand where the holes are? You know, is there one thing that, that, that the judges will maybe look at is, do they have the communication skills to present a compelling, compelling story? So if that's something that you feel very um, uncomfortable with, get your practice, being in front of people, um, and, and doing that pitch over and over before you get out there in front of the judges. Market, is the market large enough? Is it reachable? Is it defendable? And what's the, what's the pain and what's the solution? So how big is your market? And do you really understand your industry? Um, and do you really understand your customer? 
So this is where the mar looking at the market and the market size. And the other thing is, do you understand your competition? What else is out there? I mean, we hear a lot of the times, there's no competition. We do it the best, right? There's always competition in some form or fashion. Um, for example, competition for vehicles, maybe bicycles or legs. So, that, I mean, that's a very general way, but that's, there, there is competition. So we want to see that the teams understand that, that what the competition is and really what their advantage is. The third thing is concept and product. So what do you have? What's your value proposition? What's your product or service? Um, conceptually, is it interesting and is it superior? Um, what, and this is where we want you to talk about your sustainable competitive advantage. Um, what, what is interesting about that? Do you have defend, defensible intellectual property and have you filed patents on it? Where do you stand on those sorts of things? So describing the product and, uh, in a very clear fashion, in a compelling way, and your um, sustainable competitive advantage. Feasibility in the market is looking at if you can go to market. What is your marketing strategy? What is your sales strategy? What is, do you have any customers that v can validate what, you're, what you have, your product or service? Um, what are your milestones to get to where you are? Is it realistic? Um, and then basically, is it feasible? Is this whole thing feasible or is it a pie in the sky? Operations, looking at um, how to design, what's the supply chain, are we going to manufacture and source things? Who are your partners? Um, how, if you don't have any partners, who do you want to be your partners? And how are you going to deliver your product out there? How does it? Um, how is the customer going to get it? How are they going to pay for it? Um, if you have a licensing model, how is that going to work? Briefly on the uh, on this on the financials and profitability. What is the financial potential, and is it realistic? What is the funding that you need to get to where you are going? And what are the milestones that you'll get there? How are you going to prove that, that okay, maybe I need a million now to get the prototype. After we get that, we expect $10 million. $10 million, we ex the use of funds are X, Y, and Z. And we expect that to last how long? What's your burn rate? Um, how many people do you need to get to the next milestone? And, you know, one of the things I like uh, that I, I see sometimes is, that revenues go up but expenses stay flat. And that's obvious. That's not clearly the. Way, that's not usually the way things go. Um, so it needs to be your financial model should be realistic and thought out. Um, I understand for the executive summary part, a lot of people don't know their financial model right now, and a lot of it is a guess. But may, go further deep, deeper into what is the market size and work backwards, or you know either do a bottom up or top down uh, way to triangulate what your financials realistically should look like. Last thing, but it's not um, less important, is sustainability. So sustainability is the environmental and the social impact on of your product, of your service um, to the world, basically. So we want you to be able to quantify what environmental impact you have and what actions have you taken and what actions will you take. And what is the impact of your team's solution? So looking at product life cycle, which is cradle to cradle, looking at energy and carbon, looking at operations, and looking at toxic materials. Those are three key pieces of the product and service life cycle. Um, and then operations wise, is your operation sustainable? Um, so this is one thing that most entrepreneurs don't think about. We're focused on the product, we're focused on getting customers, but the last thing you think about is, is our product, is our operations green, right? So this is something that we're trying to introduce and think about, um, and we're not asking you to do this by yourself. We have sustainability mentors, we have a sustainability clinic tonight, and um, email our sustainability chair. You can set up one-on-one -on -one business clinics to talk about your company specifically. and. This will be August 9th, 12th, and 19th, those Tuesdays. Um, you'll be able to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with experts in sustainability. So we're not expecting you to do this all yourself. We're here to help you. And there's also experts in finance, ex from you know on the tech side, on the Deloitte side, on the planning side. There's experts in the legal field. And there's all these business clinics to help you create the best plan and to, to get your product out there.